Hello, this is Ivan Irons, and you've made it to day six, CNC machining. Now, this is really where the rubber meets the road. We're going to remove material. We're going to make parts. So let's get to it. We're on that fifth step. You'll see it. We're going to build parts to specifications. We're going to remove material. All the different steps before this were really working inside of the computer. Well, today we're going to work in the real world with machining. And you'll also see it's the last step in our uh, flow chart as well. So what is CNC machining? Well, guess what? It's the same as manual machining except for a computer is going to be controlling the movement. So on a manual machine there's a number of different cranks and levers and uh, switches, that sort of thing. Uh, that you use to control the machine's movements. Well, all that's going to be replaced by our computer sending out signals to the steppers or servo motors, which will be moving the axis in various specific ways. So you look, there's just a photograph there of uh, a tool removing material, and that was from our simulation in the CAM section. Now we're going to have the same machining issues either way whether it's uh, CNC machining or manual machining. Odds are we're probably going to be using some sort of coolant if it's uh, we're machining a metal. We'll also have chips and those really turn into high-speed projectiles. In plasma, the equivalent of that is plasma dust and dirt and smoke. And in wood routing, it's uh, wood dust and sometimes chips. But those kind of go to the next point here which is this is we have to be very aware of our safety uh, before this the various steps to CNC there weren't things flying around uh, or the chance of them hitting us well now we need to wear safety glasses when we're out in the shop we're gonna need some personal protective equipment heavier clothes uh, maybe a machinist apron steel-toed boots, that sort of thing, and uh, safety can even go just to the movement of the machine. Uh, these machines are very powerful and uh, just their movements could knock people over or p have them pinned up against uh, various items if you don't know um, their movements very well. So safety is going to be a big thing when we machine. Here's a look at some chips ones on the left there, those are left over. I was uh, machining some aluminum and they fly around. Uh, this is high speed. The spindle's going at, uh, you know, whatever, a thousand RPM. And as it's removing material, those chips are flying around. On the right, you'll see that's kind of what's left over from drilling. Uh, and kind of what I'm pointing out there is those are sharp. As you're handling them, you don't just reach in and grab chips or remove them. Uh, there's a cutting hazard as well. Well, in machining, whether it's CNC or manual, it requires tooling. And some of the tools you're probably pretty familiar with. Other ones will have kind of odd eccentric names, but even the lowly drill bit is a type of tooling. In machining, we also have end mills. A uh, plasma cutter could be considered a tool if it's a CNC plasma cutter. Uh, dovetail cutter, fly cutter, we have router bits if we get into wood router. There's a number of people that out there they make small uh, routers that use Dremels and even Dremel tooling could be considered tooling here. You look on the right there's uh, a toolbox I have out in my shop. You'll see a number of different bits and end mills and indicators and uh, there's some parallels there. Uh, all that I, I use when I'm uh, machining. So where do you get these tools? Uh, there's a number of good places um, out there and as you flip through you can look at the various names and uh, types of tooling that are available. Any of these sources are pretty good uh, to get you acclimated to it. So McMaster's Car, Enco, Travers, Granger, they'll all send you for free. Just get on their website, search those names. They'll all send you a giant, massive Bible that has all their tooling and equipment that they sell uh, with pictures, some of them color, 
get on their mailing list uh, over a month or so you should have a pretty good idea of the type of tooling that you'll need if you collect all those up and flip through them at your leisure and then in CNC machining there's a number of actual machines that are out there and I have a number of them listed here plasma cutter lathe wire cutter tube bender and this list goes on and on and on and on there are people who make purpose-built CNC machines I can think of a guy I came across uh, he makes large columns for think of down south plantation type of estates those old columns out front holding up the various porches uh, he made a specialty wood router that all he does is load uh, giant wood stock into it and it goes to town he comes back eight hours later and he has one of these giant columns milled out uh, and very ornate that he can go back sell these and they go back in and do kind of a architectural reconstruction but I guess the point is is there's many many types of CNC machines which equates to many many types of uh, machining that you'll come across here's a look at a couple of them on the left we have a full-size mill and if you look inside of it you'll see an engine block an aluminum engine block that it's working on it's a multi-axis machine it can spin that around uh, and get to it pretty much from every nook and cranny and on the right we have a home setup this is a I'd consider it a CNC uh, mill but a mini mill and you'll notice there's a computer set up there and he also has it in an enclosure to keep all those chips from flying around and on the screen you'll see Mach 3 this next one on the left we have a turning center or a CNC lathe this is a production type of setup and on the right just to give you a look at a CNC wood router there's one has a project loaded in it uh, on the right hand side of that photo is the milling head and the router and uh, you'll see there's a flat sheet there it looks like balsa wood and they have various cuts out of it for a boat and then you'll see the model of the boat in that photo as well put together so that kind of gives you a flavor for the different types of CNC machines out there both home and commercial and that's going to be it for today so tomorrow we're going to go through some CNC parts and completed projects I want to show you some uh, types of projects or parts that were completed so you can see kind of the outcome of CNC if you get into it. Um, some of the things that you can make or build and we'll look at true parts and we'll look at some creative projects as well. But in the meantime, if you have any questions at all, you can go to cncinformation.com and get more information. Thanks.